Hello everyone, welcome to another Directions Mag Geospatial webinar. Today sponsored by Esri, I am Barbara Duke, Managing Editor here at Directions Mag, joined by our Assistant Webinar Producer, Lynette Qualia. So we are excited to welcome back Dr. Lorraine Tai, and she always brings wonderfully talented folks with her. Uh, today she has brought Jamon Johnson and Matthew Calamito. They're here to discuss image exploitation and in particular using ArcGIS Excalibur. So they're gonna show us how it is done. So welcome folks, we are excited to have you today and looking forward to learning more about imagery. I know we've got a lot of folks interested in using this in their workflows. Lorraine, welcome. Thanks so much, Barbary. And like Barbary said, we're gonna be looking at imagery exploitation using our newest product, ArcGIS Excalibur. I'm very excited to have the team present to you today and we look forward to your questions and hopefully we will have covered what you wanted to see during this webinar. Um, in the next slide you'll see that um, I did a bit of a survey of um, everybody who signed up for uh, the webinar. I wanted to see there was an opportunity to put a question what you really wanted to learn about and so I broke it up into a series of categories for image um, and exploitation workflows, the best tips and tools um, for image interpretation, how to access and manage imagery, how do we do change detection, and just the general information about ArcGIS Excalibur. And so you can see the percentages here. Uh, most folks are really looking for those workflows to help them um, interpret their imagery um, easily. And then, of course, the tips and tools um, of the trade. So we're going to get an opportunity to learn more about all of these. Um, Jamon and Matt are incredibly experienced with this product and with their users. And I think you're going to be in for an exciting um, opportunity to learn from world work, world experiences, where we show you how to, you can search and discover imagery quite easily. Um, have the ability to enhance and markup imagery, make observations, and of course do some image comparison. So we're pretty excited. So um, before we move on to Jamon and Matt, I want to do a poll question. So we'll get Barbary to start that up and then we'll go to Jamon. All right, so quickly, uh, we'd like to learn what software you are currently using to exploit your imagery. Is that Esri? It looks like we've got uh, a few other choices there, and oh my goodness, that's very. <laughs> I, I don't know that I've ever seen a poll be this uh, very clear in their answer. Um, so give folks just about two more seconds to vote, and let's have a look. We have a strong 91% reporting in with Esri tools. So I know that's good news to the team here. <laughs> Thanks for sharing folks. We really appreciate it. So uh, Javon, over to you. Uh, thank you, Barbie and, and team. Um, hi again, I'm, I'm Javon Johnson. Um, I'm a product manager with Esri. Um, and today, like Lorraine said, we're really, really excited to, to share you with you. Um, our story behind Excalibur and how I support these unique workflows. So, but before we get into Excalibur, um, just to hit the reset button right quick and really talk about um, ArcGIS as really being a scalable platform that works with all types of imagery to really create this valuable information products and, and look at insights. Now, for a lot of our Azure users, we know that, you know, imagery has been part of the ArcGIS platform for the last uh, 50 years or so, but we really treated imagery as a layer or data set. In today's comprehensive imagery platform, we really want to provide our user, users with an imagery first experience. And we accomplish this by um, using different applications organized by five key components. So starting from the, on the right hand side from the bottom up, you know, first we have the imagery management um, capability, which is being managed by our uh, imagery server. Um, an image server manages and hosts massive amounts of imagery and disseminate that data set through services. Um, next we have for, for map production, um, we have products like Drone and Maps, and that really is about you know creating map data 
and digital elevation module models from imagery. Uh, uh, next on the list is ArcGIS Pro for analysis. Um, that Pro experience uses our image analysis extension. Um, and we use image analytics extension for, you know, extraction of information and really about that really deep, rich analysis of imagery. And then on top of the list, um, the uh, visualization exploitation. Um, here we have part of like Excalibur where we get ready to dive into. And Excalibur, again, you know, utilize all types of imagery, you know, for quickly um, searching, discover, annotize, and disseminate the, those products to our decision makers. So Excalibur, right? So RGI Excalibur is a cloud-based imagery application that integrates and enhances image-based workflow through these intuitive experiences. Excalibur provides a way of users to work with imagery in a focused experience, um, really designed to promote efficient workflows for better decisions. You know, Lorraine mentioned, um, users can easily search, discover, compile, and share those dynamic Im information products and its insights across their organizations. So who, who are the users or what organizations um, that can benefit from, benefit from Excalibur? So we have organizations like Department of Homeland Security, um, Department of Defense. Excalibur also supports disaster response type organizations, the intelligence community to include international national security, as well as Excalibur support those organizations like Department of Agriculture. Now, within those organizations, who are the users actually can use this, this application or what this application is designed for? First, we have Jane. You know, Jane is what we consider an all-source analyst. This person may not may or may not be a a a, a highly trained imagery GI specialist, um, but she can use Excalibur to support organizations like humanitarian release organizations um, to help her quickly uh, find imagery to support those requirements. Then we have users like Staff Sergeant Smith, right? This individual, she's an experienced imagery analyst. And although this is a, a, a lightweight, you know, cloud-based applications, um, she have, you know, challenges with using multiple different applications to perform her job. Um, and also have these complex workflows that we use Excalibur, and you see later on in the demo, how we create these proficient workflows um, through these intuitive experiences. And we have, you know, our managers, right? Now, these managers may not be doing their day-to-day, -day, you know, exploitation tasks, but they're responsible for, for providing, you know, reports and, and metrics and, and estimate their support of, uh, supportability across different products. Um, with Excalibur, as it's fully integrated into the ArcGIS platform, um, we can use things like, you know, dashboards uh, and, and, and insights to, to gain more and better understanding uh, for future planning and quicker and faster decisions. Now, Excalibur provides our customers with a variety of different different benefits and, and features. Um, first, uh, walking through the the workflow of a, of a typical uh, um, user, we have this you know integrated imagery access and discovery capability, fully integrated inside of the platform, um, and you see that in in the demo. And this this uh, this in, integrated approach. I uh, have, you know, user defined settings to quickly help our users find the results. You can filter things from date ranges, uh, from cloud covers, you know, predictive layers, you know, obliquity, including image names. We try to give our, our analysts the flexibility to really personalize their experiences to really get at that particular uh, imagery that they need instead of crawling through, you know, thousands of images and clicking on each one of those things to find the specific uh, imagery for that specific need. And then there's exploitation. And this is, in my opinion, this is really where um, we bring that, that GIS and imagery. Inside of this web application, we have the ability to, to view oblique and authorified image, imagery side by side. And that's really, really powerful in this community because you get the best of both worlds. Um, looking at uh, oblique imagery built on a GIS foundation. So on, the ability to be able to extract those coordinates from oblique imagery and automatically save inside of a, uh, a, a database. Uh, and then we um, introduce this enrich enhancement for imagery um, 
uh, annotations. Um, and the imagery annotation, again, because it's built on that GIS uh, backbone, um, all that data set from those annotations are, are captured and those features are stored into, into a database. Um, we all introduce, uh, like the rain say, this comparison workflows um, in a web application, you know, quickly uh, identifying uh, change over time on certain, certain data sets. Um, in Excalibur, um, something that's recently new, um, we're able to support um, non-Caribbean uh, image services. Um, and what that really means is that when you create an image server, um, there's a requirement um, to, to select uh, that those image services being, um, be searchable. And even if a user forget to, 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 to click that particular box, um, we, we, we definitely notify you, notify you in the application um, that you forgot the box, but at the same time, we also give you the experience to be able to continue to work with that particular imagery. Now, one, one of the powerful um, benefits of Excalibur, um, we introduced this concept of, uh, of projects. And what project is, is really about an a, a imagery shoebox. We really want to really streamline and, and focus those uh, specific workflows. So, so things like, you know, the, the question that they're trying to, to answer, you know, things like the contextual or reference information that they may need for the exploitation. Um, the, the imagery uh, itself is part of this imagery project. Um, and we even, even identify certain tools that's required. So now, instead of analysts searching multiple different applications um, to support that specific task, we, we really want to bring all that together in, in one um, um, integrated workflow. So an analyst just click on, on that box, enter that experience, and everything they need to exploit is right there in front of them you know, through this, this web experience. Um, with that, um, one of the, with the projects you see here in a little bit is this, um, this observation project. Um, and you know, quickly being able to uh, capture those observation uh, on imagery, you know, saving all the information that's associated with the observations, and and we also have the ability to to uh, add time enabled observations. So you can see observation that was captured over time um, to help again uh, make better insights um, into their product. Um, these observation layers uh, for our, our ArcGIS users. Um, you can create these layers inside of applications, so there's not a need to go outside of the app um, into um, a different application and, and create a layer and then expose it into the app. All this work is being done um, inside of the UI. Uh, a couple of things we added with the projects, um, as this application, I think April 9th is our anniversary for this product, for our year anniversary, so a couple of things we added over the last month or so is being able to, you know, um, edit those different projects. for So things like um, a, a new image collects um, comes into the project, um, users quickly uh, notify and make those adjustments on the fly to continue with the workflow um, instead of creating new projects. Um, things like, you know, uh, modifying the different symbology that you're using. Here in the screen you see a yellow dot, you know, maybe you want to add some different type of symbology based on your organization requirements. And then it's really great about, you know, being able to quickly search and find your imagery, trying to exploit, you know, using all these focused tools um, to actually exploit that uh, imagery, whether it's GIS and imagery integrated. Um, but none of that really matters if you can't get that information out um, to the decision maker or, or the end users. Um, so because Excalibur is completely integrated inside of the uh, ArcGIS Enterprise, you know, we take in, you know, once was typically used as a, you know, static way of producing imagery is that we're creating these um, interactive briefing products. Um, so things like our story map and dashboards, um, the, all that analysis is stored inside your enterprise GIS, and you can expose or access um, that analysis uh, through these products. Um, I mentioned before about the, the, the imagery manager or GIS manager, you know, be able to perf uh, perform uh, uh, metric analysis and, and temporal analysis, you know, looking at if you're doing um, multiple um, organizations, uh, uh, co-production, um, or it's whether or not there's, you know, some analysts need some type of encouragement because they're not producing up to extend it. And the, and the list goes on. Um, with these, with these, uh, uh, this capability integrated into enterprise, you know, we do things uh, like traceability, right? So now an, anal an analyst can answer or supervisor can answer, you know, how did the analyst got to that particular 
um, that particular assessment, you know, being able to show your homework because, you know, because everything is already captured and we're not asking the analyst to go offside of the, the application to do this. All this is interactively part of the, part of the solution. Um, and we speak a lot about dynamic imagery project, um, but we also understand that there's a need for certain organizations to produce these static products. Um, so quickly uh, market up the imagery, identifying what's important, and saving that product out as a as a JPEG or a PDF um, inside of uh, inside of a PowerPoint, and then uh, manage imagery um, enterprise production. Again, when you're when you're working, you know, cross team across organizations, um, because everyone of these organizations are part a part of that project, a part of this application. Uh, managers uh, can can use you know these different um, uh, enterprise application. Um, to to efficiently manage a, a different organization for for co-productions. So now we have understanding of you know what the caliber really you know brings to um, organization, the type of folks in this organization who would use this application. Um, so what are the requirements for it? Um, as I mentioned, uh, Excalibur. Um, April 9th is our year anniversary, so um, last April um, when ArcGIS Enterprise 10.7 was released, um, Excalibur was, was part of that. So the, the sort of baseline requirement for Excalibur is um, ArcGIS uh, Enterprise 10.7 or, or above. Um, and you also, um, Excalibur is, is a web application, so um, you will see when, when um, Matt begins his demo, um, this, this application uh, requires a separate um, install um, um, to portal and, and requires a separate license. But once it's installed for the common user, it's a matter of logging into their portal and as long as they have the, the appropriate uh, license permission, they just click a button and the application launches. Um, the only other thing you, you, you need outside the ArcGIS portal um, and, and, and this, this premium app is the ArcGIS image server. An image server really is the, the brainchild behind all this. So what we're really doing is exposing all the capabilities in, uh, of the image server in this intuitive uh, web application. And then, like I mentioned, um, Excalibur um, um, requires um, enterprise uh, 10.7 uh, standard or above. And at this time, I turn it back over to the team for our next poll question. All right. So what is your most common workflow when utilizing imagery? Is that visual image comparison, automated change detection, image adjustment and display, collecting features from imagery, or search and discovery? And it looks like, again, we have a very clear winner. We'll give folks another couple of seconds, click quickly, and look at these results. 44% winning at collecting features from imagery, and then uh, almost a, a tie for all the other options. Great insights, folks. Thanks so much. All right. And Jaman, I think we are over to Matt next. Yes. So Matt's going to demonstrate everything I just, just talked about. Wonderful. So Matt, over to you and uh, show awesome. us how it's done. <laughs> that sounds great. Thank you very much. As Jaman just mentioned, uh, my name is Matt Calamito. I'm uh, the lead product engineer for ArcGIS Excalibur. And I really wanted to just take some time today to walk you through the application and to get you a better understanding of the experiences that you would uh, be able to leverage when utilizing this web application. Um, so when Jaman mentioned um, ArcGIS Excalibur is a web application, um, that means that I, um, as a user, so my name up in the upper right-hand corner, I have an identity in my ArcGIS Enterprise portal. And therefore, once I am licensed with Excalibur, I can easily launch that from our app launcher located on the portal home app. So it's a very lightweight web app that can be launched directly from your organization's portal home. Now, the first thing I'll kind of walk you through in the Excalibur application is getting that basic understanding of 
what is Excalibur? Where is my imagery? How do I find it? And how do I begin working with it? And Excalibur really allows you to work with a bunch of different imagery um, at the web tier. So I'm gonna take you um, through the experiences in this upper row of cards here. Um, these are our uh, ways of allowing you to search for imagery within your organization. So I'm gonna start from right to left, the first dealing with uh, an imagery web service. Um, and this is just a common workflow where if you have a, a URL to a specific image server service, um, you can uh, easily paste that in and, and navigate directly to the imagery located at that URL where you can begin your search and discovery. You'll notice that when I paste in my URL, we run a validation to make sure that we are able to access that URL um, and that it is a valid URL. Um, and if so, we, we provide you with two options, which we'll, we'll get into both of these options um, as we walk through this application. You'll see the first uh, in the blue button is what we would call our canvas. Um, and then in the black button is what we would call our catalog. And, and again, I'll, I'll get into that in just a second. Um, so the first way of kind of identifying imagery is through a, a web service URL. The next is through what we would call our My Available Imagery. Um, when I click on um, this specific experience, you'll notice that there's a bunch of different cards here, all bringing um, forward all the imagery layers that are located within my organization's portal. Um, so for those that are familiar with ArcGIS portal, there's many different item types um, that are available. And one of those item types is an imagery layer. And what this experience allows us to do is quickly sift through all of our organization's items um, and the ones that you have access to and are of type imagery layer, we quickly bring them to the forefront to allow you to identify what type of imagery you have um, that you can immediately use. Again, that just inherits all the permissions and properties that you as the um, identity within your organization can access. Now, the first thing you should uh, be able to notice is I can gain an understanding of each of these services, right? So such as the service name. Um, so depending on how your organization publishes image services, this would be based on the naming convention that you have in your organization. Now, I can look at these services through different types of views, just like I could in at the portal home app. Um, I can also begin to search or sift through based on keywords or potential names of these image services, and that'll dynamically filter these cards for me. If I wanted to gain a quick understanding of where this, um, or, or more information about the image service, I can also use this uh, options menu, which would take me directly to the portal home and begin to understand a little bit more about the layer. You'll also notice those two buttons that I had mentioned before. So from this view, um, we allow you to identify imagery that's available to you and either immediately connect to the canvas or connect to the catalog. Now, as I scroll through this list, you'll notice that I have um, three green check marks, um, actually four here, um, which really allow me as, an, as a user to say that these are my favorites or the ones that I use most often. Um, the key thing here is these are all um, unique to each individual that's logging into Excalibur. As we all know, we all have different jobs and different roles, and we may be working on specific tasks or over areas of interest that may change day in and day out and are different from one another. So the, the tasks in the area that I'm working on may be different than Lorraine and, and Jaman, and therefore I have the ability to say, I use these services most often and allow me to easily um, add and remove these services. And what that just did is it updated my user settings and allowed me to say that out of all of these available imagery services, I now care about these five most often. So the last way of identifying imagery is through a more interactive way, and it might be the most common that, that folks on the, on the line are used to, and this is through our imagery search catalog. So you may not have a, a web service URL, you may not really need to know the exact image service that you wanna work with through the My Imagery uh, or My Available Imagery workflow, but you know the area in which you're working in, and you have maybe specific search settings or criteria that you need to find imagery on. And that can all be accomplished through our imagery search catalog. Um, you'll notice down in the lower left-hand corner, um, I have what we would kind of call our quick access. Um, it's our way of saying those imagery services that I checked as my favorites are now easily available through this interface and experience to allow me to switch between these services. Notice it's not all the imagery layers that were available from my available imagery. 
um, but only those ones that I checked on. And you'll notice that there were five there since I just added that fifth one. Within our search catalog, like I had mentioned, it allows you to apply specific filters, whether that's area of interest filters, uh, whether that's cloud cover, obliquity, nears, date ranges, right? So what we're doing here is we're reading in your active image service. In this case, I have an active image service of a panchromatic service from San Francisco area. Um, you'll notice that I have my search settings summary down at the bottom saying that I do not have any specific filters except for my current map area identified. But what we're doing is we're reading in the service, we're identifying what metadata is a part of this service, and then offering you the ability to sort or filter based on the available metadata that we have. Now, if I don't really have a specific uh, metadata that I wanna search on, I can simply just run search and what the application will do is it'll identify based on your current area, what is the extent of the image service that you have active? And notice that it did go directly to the San Francisco area. The first thing that you can see is that a list of results are now available in my search results tab. And as I hover over each of these results, the corresponding footprint will highlight in the map on the left. Now, if I toggle the image on um, and I select a specific image of interest, You'll notice that that image now displays with inside that uh, selected, um, uh, selected footprint. Now this image is actually a full resolution image um, and we'll get into this in just a minute, but this is not a thumbnail. This allows me to kind of take a quick look at this specific image in its um, um, ortho rectified state. So we are fitting it onto the map here in this instance. From these results, I can also take a look at the metadata, um, gain an understanding about this image and, and what metadata belongs to this specific image. And lastly, I can preview that image dynamically. Again, this is not a thumbnail, but it is a full resolution image um, of that specific selected image in its native perspective. So if you notice, we are not ortho rectifying it to fit on a map but we're actually displaying it in the way it was collected off the sensor. And this specific imagery is actually what we'd refer to as highly oblique, right? We can see that it was taken at a specific angle for a specific reason. Now from this preview window, I can also take a look at the metadata. I can also uh, rotate my image if this is of interest, if I needed to take a look at this image at a specific angle. Um, and then just a sing single click, I can um, also move that back to what we would refer to as top is up. Now for each image that I select, that'll be added to the queued images tab. So in this instance, maybe I'm an analyst and I've been tasked with identifying any vessel activity that could be taking place in the San Francisco Bay. Um, so utilizing the catalog experience, I can now uh, interrogate this collection of imagery from San Francisco and I can identify those images that may have activity that's occurring. As we can see on this image, there is some activity of vessels in the San Francisco Bay. And now that I've kind of interrogated that image service, I've identified two images that might work for my task. I can now do one of two things. I can either create an imagery project, which we'll get to uh, later on, or I can connect to Canvas. And again, there's that blue button to, to connect to my Canvas. So let's go ahead um, with the task at hand as an analyst to identify some of this activity occurring. And we're going to exploit our imagery in what we would refer to as our exploitation Canvas. So notice how I'm staying in the same application. I've just, I've just conducted a search and discovery experience. And now instead of downloading that image locally and being able to exploit it, we're staying within the same browser, within the same uh, application, and I'm able to continue my workflow. One real key advantage of ArcGIS Excalibur. Now let me just kind of walk you through the, the exploitation canvas quickly here. Um, you'll notice down at the bottom, I have my uh, image metadata table. As I hover over those uh, selected images, they also do highlight on my map canvas here. As I zoom into one of these images, uh, again, this is a full resolution image that's being ortho rectified on the fly to really match that image to the ground. And if I kind of toggle the image on and off, you'll notice that we're taking that highly oblique image. And from the power of the image server, we're really ortho rectifying that on the fly based on the pixels that are within my current view. Also within Excalibur, we provide a set of tools that allow you to work with the image. And we're gonna step through a couple of these in just a second. Another powerful uh, capability of Excalibur, as Jaman mentioned earlier, is being able to view imagery side by side. 
Um, so I can select a specific image and I can choose to view that image side by side. Now on the left-hand side is what we'd refer to as our traditional map space view. Again, ortho rectifying that, that image um, and fitting it onto a 2D map. Well, those folks that work with imagery on a day-to-day -day basis um, isn't great with oblique imagery to view it into map space. As you can see, these buildings look very um, distorted. They're falling out of the sky. The bridge here looks very wavy and wonky, right? Well, maybe as an analyst, I need to view that in what we would call its native perspective or its image focus view. So on the right-hand side, as I kind of navigate on this image, you'll notice that my extents are locked. The left-hand side providing me with reference, and the left-hand side or the right-hand side providing me with the ability to fully work with this imagery. So I'm actually going to make this a full extent image and be able to work with it in the way it was captured. So let's take a look at some of the tools now that I can use to exploit. We have a few display tools that will allow me to uh, on the fly do rendering, and we'll get into some of our renderers in just a second. But if I want to quickly apply things like DRA and gamma to my image. Um, you'll notice there was some uh, light contrast that took place there. Again, that's all occurring on the fly. What's really key here is there's a single image on disk. So I'm not duplicating this image um, and I'm not downloading it and saving it elsewhere. This is all being done on the fly through the power of web image services, which is really what our image server technology is great at. So if I wanted to continue to, to change the display aspects, I can... Um, change my resampling method. If I wanted to change my uh, stretch functions, I can change this to a percent clip on the fly. You'll notice it gets a little darker. It dramatizes some of those shadows that may be taking place. So those are just some of the examples of being able to apply enhancements on the fly. Knowing that um, as an analyst, I am supposed to be tasked with identifying any activity taking place on the San Francisco Bay. Let's actually um, navigate uh, just simply by panning and zooming to that location where I do see some vessel activity. And I'm going to use some of my exploitation tools to quickly just mark up or identify those vessels in my current view. So what I'll do here is I'll actually choose um, uh, to drop a couple points um, and we'll use uh, red on a few of these uh, vessels just to quickly identify that each of these vessels uh, may be something of interest, right? And I can quickly just connect these, or excuse me, collect these as I go along. So we'll just connect, uh, collect one more here, and we'll be able to call out and maybe highlight these as our key vessels of interest. So now I'm just going to simply sketch or annotate on top of my image here. And maybe I uh, will also add a quick label. And we'll make our label in orange just to kind of um, identify that a little bit separately. So we'll say this is vessel activity. And I can simply place that onto my map. I can adjust that just a little bit to make that look a little nice for my exporting report. So as an analyst being tasked with identifying certain areas of activity, um, I've now just quickly marked up and sketched on the image here that I'm viewing. And I can quickly now export that image as what we would refer to as a presentation. So in just a single click here, what this is going to do is it's going to create um, a, just a, a, a PowerPoint presentation um, that I'm going to open up here and just kind of walk you through. So as that opens up, you'll notice that what has happened is it has just simply taken the current view that I was looking at. It has also taken the metadata of the image in my view and has added it into the PowerPoint as a quick way to um, get out the task at hand um, and to be able to place into my organization's PowerPoint templates. So that's what we would call our ad hoc workflow, being able to search, discover imagery based on a task at hand, and then be able to exploit this image, whether it's changing my display, changing my renderers, and then calling out key areas through our markup tools. So the last thing I want to show you um, is the notion of being able to choose different imagery. Um, and also being able to apply renderers to it. So in this instance, I'm going to use the My Available imagery, and I'm going to connect to a completely different image service directly to my canvas. So maybe I do want to look at 260 records in this instance all at once. I can toggle my footprints off. And just to give you another example of some of these renderers, um, these are done on, on the server again. So on the fly right now, I'm looking at all these images and what we would call the natural color renderer. But if I maybe am concerned with NDVI and, and change in um, 
um, agriculture or landscape over time, I can quickly apply that render. Again, single image on disk, but now being applied across all 260 records simultaneously. So again, just another example to kind of show you the power of the image server and working with web services uh, through, through a browser experience. So as the last part of the workflow, now that you've seen kind of the ad hoc, you've gained familiarity with a catalog view and being able to search and discover, and then now you kind of know what our canvas view is like and being able to utilize tools. Let's take a look at an imagery project. Now an imagery project is a dynamic way to organize resources required to complete an image-based task all in a single location. So as an analyst, I can take a look at imagery projects that are available to me, again, those that I have access to, to gain an understanding about each imagery project, such as the project name, a brief description, who created it, when was it created, and what type of project it is. And that's denoted in that blue font there. Now a project type is very key as it's going to tell the application which tools to surface to provide a more focused experience for the analyst completing this, this project. So let's open up this specific imagery project and take a closer look. You'll notice that this imagery project's uh, opening up in, in our canvas view. You'll notice that we have the time slider, just like we, uh, excuse me, the, the metadata table, just like we had before. But now since I opened up an observation type project, we have another tab here that's available to us, the time slider tab. This allows me to take a look at observations that may have been collected over this specific area to be able to view previous observations um, without making additional observations first, right? So this is just a way to kind of time enable previously collected observations to gain an analyst an understanding of what's occurring. Now, what's neat about an, uh, an imagery project is every set of projects uh, have a set of tools. So you'll notice now that I've opened up an imagery project, I have a set of project tools. All imagery projects are associated uh, with analyst instructions. So this really informs the analyst of what they need to complete in their observation project. So in this case, I need to collect and record observations for any active construction occurring in Hollywood, California. So now that I have an understanding of what I need to do, um, I can now utilize my project tools to start collecting these observations, right? So maybe as an analyst, I'm gonna adjust my canvas to take a closer look at any construction activities that may be occurring within this specific image. As I take a look at that image, both in overhead on my left-hand side, and also through the oblique view in my right-hand side, I can immediately tell there is some active construction occurring. So utilizing my collect observation tools, I can click directly on the palette of icons, and I can click directly on the image based on what I'm identifying as some active construction taking place. I can add in a comment, maybe these are the analyst comments. And I can also utilize domains and drop downs. In this case, maybe this is commercial construction taking place. But these attributes are based on what your organization uh, defines in these observation layers. Now, lastly, behind the scenes, what's happening is we're also auto-populating specific fields. So knowing that this analyst, myself, clicked directly on this image within this imagery project, we're collecting some, some, some attribution behind the scenes, such as this observation is now tied to this specific imagery project on this specific image name. It was collected at this date and time, at this specific lat long, even at this specific map scale. So we have an understanding of what map scale that that analyst uh, collected that observation in. And in just a single click, now I can actually collect that observation which gets written to the system of record. Now on the back end, that is being stored again in the system of record. So therefore we can utilize um, these observations in downstream analysis like this operations dashboard that you see here. So you'll notice that just at 1.40 p.m. I've collected a new observation. It's now highlighted on the map and has really in real time allowed me as the analyst to help update either my supervisor's view or just um, information within my organization to be able to kind of view some of these observations and not just keep them in a stovepipe solution. So that's just kind of one example of what we would call our pre-planned um, imagery project, right? This was an observation project, being able to collect observations, being able to store those observations in a system of record to then be utilized in downstream analysis. 
So the last example I'll show you is a comparison example that seemed to be very interest uh, to many here on the phone today. So let's take a look and connect directly to the canvas at some aerial imagery that's been taking place uh, back in the 1960s. What I can do here is I can quickly take um, a look at some of my uh, display tools and maybe we're interested in the airport um, and any change that has occurred at this specific uh, airfield. So I'm going to use my swipe tool to simply uh, begin comparing um, the imagery from 1967 to current, right? And now I have the ability to either swipe in both my horizontal and I can see immediately there's been a lot of change and growth at this specific airfield. Um, or I could take a look at it vertically, right? So a quick way to kind of view um, manually or visually being able to see change. And this is where I can then again utilize my markup tools um, to be able to display that. Uh, lastly, I can also use some of my flicker tools. So in this instance, maybe I want to flicker between these specific images at a set rate and maybe one second. So you'll notice that without doing anything, this is kind of automating the notion of visually seeing comparison uh, between this specific airfield. So that was kind of the quick and dirty of being able to um, show you um, some workflows, both through an ad hoc, we showed search and discovery, we showed exploitation, and we introduced the notion of an imagery project to both collect observations um, and accomplish analyst tasks. So with that, I think I can send it back over uh, for an additional poll question, um, and then also send it back to Jaman. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. That's a uh, great information. <clears throat> really, really interesting. So let's get into this next poll question. What is the most common type of imagery that you personally work with? Uh, so we've got a few choices here, oblique, nadir, motion, elevation layers, oriented imagery from handheld devices. And as someone commented earlier, maybe their favorite choice was uh, not on the list. So if you have something else that really you wish was on the list, go ahead and type that into the chat and we'll share that with the team as well. Maybe you have something else in mind that you regularly use. All right, I'll give folks just a couple of more moments to make those decisions. And here we are. So the winner at 58% is Nadir in Madrid. And then uh, coming in second place, Elevation Layers. Very good. So thanks, folks. Um, we'll tuck this away. And Jaman, back over to you. Absolutely. Thank you. So everything you guys just saw, um, it's it's available um, um, today um, um, uh, uh, through um, the different um, Esri channels. Um, so the next couple of uh, uh, comments I want to leave you with is that the direction we're going next. Um, so as you as you talk about, you, we saw the uh, the change detection workflows, um, but some capabilities we're working on right now is more of an automated approach um, to conduct um, uh, change detections. At a, at a different analytical level. Um, markup tools. Um, we have markup tools today that you saw uh, Matt this, this uh, used in the ad hoc workflow, uh, but we really want to enhance that experience um, by being able to uh, capture and save those different um, data sets associated with it, with those um, the markups. Um, for example, all the geometry information associated with those markups, um, being able to quickly uh, to save that information out um, as well in a database or associated with some type of um, um, PDF or JPEG. Um, uploading imagery directly into Inscalibur. Um, we talk a lot about um, being, uh, uh, being able to access these image services, um, but we also understand that um, some organizations have, you know, uh, uh, loads of imagery um, on their file structure um, on, on their computer. So what we want to do is be able to use a web-based application to to access that information and, and then be able to create those image services for further use for themselves or be able to share those services out to the rest of their organizations. Um, we've heard through, you know, um, from the market that um, a lot of folks are uh, keen to work more with artificial intelligence uh, and machine learning. Um, with Excalibur, um, we'll be able to 
um, start um, introducing some of those object detector tech detectors inside of the application. Um, so open up Excalibur um, to to receive your you know your, your your own algorithm that you may have created from your organizations um, or be able to take advantage of some uh, algorithm that um, Esri provides. Um, and so you can think about um, this particular uh, workflow you know from a, a automated um, uh, observation um, capturing. So in Instead of the analysts, you know, manually capturing those different organizations, um, you know, what are what are the, the computers able to identify those observations? And then the analyst at that point is really about this this uh, verifying that those observations meet the specific criteria. Um, and then we want to we want to um, expand. Like today, you saw um, Excalibur working with a lot of um, 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 still images. Um, so we really want to um, expand that capability. Um, to have a, a experience to not only work with still imagery but motion imagery as well. Um, so you can think about uh, you know you know data from man, motion imagery from from a drone of some sort, uh, being able to um, interrogate that data, conduct analysis um, as web application, uh, and again share it with your constituents. And not only motion imagery, right? Um, a lot of customers uh, work with only imagery, so um, those handheld photos. Um, um, that have um, some type of uh, geometry associated with it. Um, like we mentioned before, early on, the Scalable works with all types of imagery, um, and why not um, be able to extend this capability to those handhelds, you know, whether it's from a video camera, um, you know, or, or some security uh, surveillance camera, being able to, to bring those images inside of the, app, the application and integrate uh, those images with other different data layers inside of RockGIS um, to make a more comprehensive uh, decision or assessment. And with that, I open it up to the next poll question. All right. So what imagery products do you produce most? PowerPoint presentations, form-based reports, image-derived analysis layers, features derived from imagery, image chips for, other, for use in uh, other applications. So we'll give everybody a moment to Click that and remind you that uh, if you have any questions, do type those into the control panel there, your question pane over in the webinar interface. And let's have a quick look here. It looks like first place is features derived from imagery, coming in second image derived analysis layers. Wonderful. Thanks so much, everybody. Really appreciate your participation. And Jaman, any last comments? No, I think uh, at this time we are, um, again, thank you guys for um, for, for everything. Um, we have additional um, resources um, that's available on um, ArcGIS, um, um, uh, Azure.com webpage. Um, and again, I'll just turn it back over to Lorraine if you have any closing comments. Um, um, to, to the audience, and we really definitely appreciate your attending and any feedback, um, please provide, and I hope you guys really enjoy what you saw. Thank you so much, Jamon, and thank you for everybody attending. So we've left some time for you guys to answer, uh, for us to answer some of your questions. We've been watching them stream through. I don't think we're going to get through all of them in the next three minutes, but we'll get through as many as we can, and we'll provide answers to the rest in our email outbound information to you guys. So thank you. Over to you, Barbary. Okay, so let's dig in. Can I create and output change detection results for the team? I can take that one. Um, so currently, um, we are, um, as Jaman had just mentioned, um, we are looking in our upcoming releases to be able to create analytical layers. Um, so doing some automatic change detection to be able to save those as analysis layers is the next step that we'll be getting to in, in our change detection workflow. So you could probably look forward to seeing that in our uh, next release uh, coming up this year. Wonderful. So this person says, as a beginner that uses ArcGIS Pro for imagery analysis, is it difficult to learn to create uh, an imagery product in Excalibur? 
Um, absolutely not, um, Mr. Jamon. Um, absolutely not. Um, we, we work through like a wizard-based workflow. Um, so the application is really designed um, for someone that has zero experience um, with RGIS, Pro RGIS Enterprise. Um, so it's, it's a really a step-by-step -step, um, process for, for creating these imagery products, projects as well as exploiting those projects. Um, and we have um, all this information is documented um, on, on the Azure.com website. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, for whatever reason, if you have a challenge of walking through the app, um, just click on the documentation and walk it right, walk it right through it. That's wonderful. So speaking of documentation, um, do you have a recommendation on the best way to learn Excalibur? Yes. So uh, we have, um, this is Matt, I can take this one. Um, so there's a couple ways. I think there's a couple videos currently out on YouTube um, from last year's uh, Esri um, UC conference that kind of walks you through the application um, in more in depth than was done today. Um, but um, it was really built intuitive um, in hopes that um, you can kind of pick it up and run with it. Um, but for those, as Jamon mentioned, we do have very well documented. It takes you through each part of the application in, in depth. Um, so um, if, if you do have trouble kind of getting started and kicking off, we do have a bunch of documentation, videos, um, and our website can definitely help uh, guide you through the application. That's great. And uh, just to add one more comment, um, our training program is also um, looking at developing some formal classes for Excalibur. Um, so, that, so we'll definitely be able to provide any blogs and updates um, when that will be available. Terrific. So um, we've got some questions about licensing um, happening here. So as Excalibur is a cloud-based application supported through ArcGIS Enterprise, can we use it without having an ArcGIS image server license? Yeah, I can I can take this one. It's, it's highly recommended that you have your own uh, image server. Um, you can all register image services to your portal so maybe you have an organization that you work with um, closely that maintains your imagery um, but your portals in a different environment or you have a different enterprise environment you can absolutely leverage those uh, through the URL that you the first kind of a way to um, work with other image services however you have no control over that um, so if they were to update the image service without your organization knowing um, it could cause some downstream effects so we do highly recommend um, having your own image server and publishing your image services to give you that control and management. Um, however, um, you can utilize outside URLs like um, um, that are available to your organization that you have access to. Excellent. So related to that, Matt, does Excalibur require an ArcGIS Online instance or can it work with Portal alone? It is um, ArcGIS Excalibur is ArcGIS Enterprise only at this time. Um, it is not available on ArcGIS Online. It is something that from a larger Esri perspective, we're looking to bring our imagery capabilities to ArcGIS Online. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, a large majority are enterprise only, so your portal environment. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so uh, also related to this image server, uh, does Excalibur involve an additional cost or is it part of the image server install? I'll take that one. Um, so yes, it is uh, requires a different um, cost um, per uh, per license. Okay. Um, so so the pricing is um, is in line with all our uh, premium app pricing. All right, excellent. Um, it, we've got someone asking a question about UAV images and where that fits in the scheme of things. Yes. Yeah, so as I mentioned on the uh, the on the last slide there on the on the roadmap. Um, we are uh, currently um, working on that experience, so we will be able to bring those UAV slash drone slash FMV motion imagery um, through Excalibur uh, our web experience. And currently today we do work with um, drone imagery. Um, again, if that is if that drone image collect, um, so utilizing something like drone to map, taking that mosaic data set and publishing that as an image service, it works today in Excalibur. So we can leverage it if it's drone. Um, but but to Jamon's statement, you know, motion imagery in, in terms of real time live uh, video is, is not um, supported at this time. OK, so uh, let's talk about another type of data. We've got someone says their organization uses scientific raster data most. 
not actual image data and wants to know how Ex would Excalibur lend itself to exploiting those kinds of data? Yeah, it's a really great question. Um, at this time, scientific data is not supported in Excalibur. Um, but again, you are talking to the development team here. So, you know, mm -hmm. we just need to understand the use case um, and workflows. And it is something that we could um, add to our roadmap to be able to support. Wonderful. Well, it, it's good to have the development team here. We got the got the source. That's awesome. Um, so folks are looking at um, what is the ability to perform mensuration, areas, links, heights. What does that look like? Yeah, that's a really good good one. I can take that one. I, I apologize. I didn't hit that on the demo. Um, we do have a set of measurement tools, so you can mm -hmm. do your basic 2D and 3D measurements, including mensurations. Um, the way that that works is we do take a look at your image service. We take a look at the RCP values and other uh, sensor models that will come with your imagery. Um, and we also utilize the elevation service that's tied to your portal. So we take all that into account. Um, and based on the, the metadata from your image service, it would allow you, if you have the sun information, you can do top to shadow, um, base to top, you know, those types of mensuration. So that is supported um, today in the application at the web tier. Very good. And what types of atmospheric correction can Excalibur perform? I, I can take that one. Um, so at this time, um, you know, Excalibur really inherits the raster functions um, that are being done to um, the image service itself from a kind of a desktop server level. So um, really, if if it's being published with specific raster functions and renders, we can apply those at the web tier. Um, but there's no out of the box tool in Excalibur to just do atmospheric change. So it would be something that would need to be published in the service to be able to be exposed by Excalibur. All right. And then uh, I think this will be our last question. Uh, what types of types of products can uh, they produce with Excalibur? I know that we listed some in the poll question there, but um, do we have a larger list or a, a guide somewhere? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's really up to the uh, to the organization. So um, I, we put it in two major categories. So more of a static product, um, as you saw, uh, Matt being able to quickly disseminate um, those products uh, out to PowerPoint, PDF, um, and because all that all analysis um, through the imagery projects are saved into the enterprise data store, um, you can create your own analytic dynamic products. Um, so think about, you know, creating a story map or, or, or using dashboard to further disseminate the information. Um, um, applying things like organizational templates, um, again, you know, Scalibur support that as well. That's terrific. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you being here today. Lorraine, thank you for always showing up with uh, talented folks and really cool tools. Thank you so much. Um, folks, remember that we are recording today and we'll archive that over at directionsmag.com slash webinars. Um, you'll also get an email from us that contains a link to the recording, the resource links that they'll be sharing with you, as well as an attendance certificate if you are needing to collect those for professional development. We appreciate your input on the survey that is on the way out. And again, special thanks to the team of Lorraine, Jaman, and Matthew. Um, a really great presentation today. We hope that you go out and make it a great day. Tell a friend about Esri and Directions Magazine. Thanks, everybody. <music>